morning, YouTube, and happy Thursday. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I am in early this morning to set up some activities for my AP Chemistry students and my CP students. And for the first time since I've taught AP, my students are actually in the exact same spot. So my CP students are learning about trends, my AP students are learning about trends. Today we're going to be looking at photoelectron spectroscopy. So I designed a card sort for my students and I want to just try it out. This is the first time I'm doing it. I'm excited. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. I'll also kind of talk a little bit about how I design card sorts and like what gives me inspiration and like what tools I use to design them because this makes my life so much easier, especially when I'm trying something for the first time. So I'm going to get those copies going and I will definitely check in with you guys a little bit later on. So it's my lunch period and I wanted to check in with you guys and tell you what I did with my students today. So um, as I mentioned, my two classes, AP and CP, miraculously are in the same exact place. Um, but now with AP, I'm moving on and we're looking at photoelectron spectroscopy. So I created this card sort and um, the first page starts with just some information about PES, what they have to learn based off of the activity. And then I had these cards, right? And you may say, Karen, they're not like cards. I mean, technically you're right. Um, but this is how I save my sanity whenever I'm trying to make something. I love creating stuff for my students. I love seeing how it works in the classroom. But to be able to take every single card and print it on cardstock, cut it out and laminate it is a lot of work, especially if I'm not 100% sure how well the activity is going to go. So whenever I'm doing a card sort for the very first time with students, usually what I do is I have the students actually cut the cards out themselves. And so this was the same kind of thing. I had the kids divide up the work. They weren't cutting out that many cards. There were a few, right? I had a lot of like about five PES to cut out and then some electron configurations that the students cut out. So it wasn't horrible, but that's one way that I can save time. Instead of me having to laminate everything and copy and cardstock and cut, I can just make them do it. And then what's nice too is they can take these home with them if they want it. So it does have some pluses. What I had the students do was look at these spectra and match up the electron configuration to the spectra. And so in some ways, this is very Pogel-like in that I didn't really tell them what the spectra like mean and what it represents. I just have them match the spectra to the electron configuration and they derive the information from there. After they match them up, I gave them the option to actually glue the electron configuration card to the spectrum. And then from there, they have some questions to answer, right? So they went through and I just wrote some questions for them, kind of looks like this, right? And so they were just answering their questions on the sheet and I asked them to do different things with the cards. So I asked them to, for example, identify an unknown. So there was like an unknown PES, right? That they had to do. Um, I had them then write the electron configuration on the actual card as well. And then um, there was an application section where I told them to cut out some new cards and apply what they're observing in the spectrum to compare the two and compare what they're seeing. And ultimately they were looking at the repulsive forces instead of the attractive forces in the atom and looking at that last peak here because of that electron arrangement with the orbitals. And so they were spending time looking at that. And so I think it went really well. I think it was a really simplistic card sort but it was very effective in teaching PES. I mean, it, it was exactly what I wanted them to do. And then with AP, one of the other things that I love to do is besides doing the card sort, I love to show them actual like AP FRQ type questions. So this is, for example, an AP FRQ type question. And then here I gave them two of them because they were short. They were definitely a short FRQ type of thing. So I gave them those to practice on. So this took about a period, um, about like 45 minutes or so. 
But I think, like I said, it was really productive. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the Pogel activity that's written for PES. They do such a great job, but I'm kind of a little bit crunched for time. So I'm trying to get through things quickly, and I, so I thought doing the cards or it would have been just a really simple way to get through the information. Now you may wonder, where did I get the PES Spectra? So I am a member of the AP Chemistry Facebook group, and so some very nice, generous person shared a um, PES generator and it's awesome because you can pick whatever elements you want. You can even superimpose elements on each other so you can compare the peaks. So it was really, really great. So if you're watching, thank you so much for that amazing generator. I use it all the time with our PES. And so that's how I was able to make all the different spectra for the students to sort. You may be wondering like, what program do I use to create them and like, what do I print them out from? So I use PowerPoint, believe it or not. Um, these are all images from PowerPoint, right? This is a, just a, a text box from PowerPoint. And all I do is I make sure that the slide size is eight and a half by 11. And then I create on there and then I just simply print it out and it's ready to go. I find that it's just a lot easier to create stuff in PowerPoint because you can manipulate stuff a little bit more easily. You can arrange things so that it's easier to cut out. So that's usually my go-to for designing card sorts. Now, obviously this card sort went really, really well today. So I anticipate what I'll do for next year or you know, whenever I have more time is I'll actually create cards made from cardstock and then I'll laminate them and cut them so that they're ready to go next year. All right, that is it for me. I know this was a little bit of a shorter video, but it's been quite a week. Um, I'm tired. I don't know how you all are feeling, but the Thanksgiving break is something that I'm definitely looking forward to. I hope you are taking care of yourself. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend and I'll definitely check in with you guys next week because guess what? It's that time of the year again, conferences. See you next week, guys.